other day I uploaded an animation I made in Blender uh, just of playing with some arrays. If you've never played with arrays in Blender before, it's really simple and you can make really cool looking things. I've never done a tutorial on it because there are a lot of tutorials and examples out there on YouTube. But uh, I've been requested uh, through comments from viewers to do a quick little tutorial on arrays. So working in Blender 2.5 beta, 2.56 to be exact. Let's get started. We have our default scene here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here to the modifiers tab. And uh, I have my cube here selected. I'm going to click on this and choose Array. And right away you can see that it looks like our box has been extended. In reality, it's actually now two boxes. If I hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, you can see both of them. There are two of them because our count here is two. So we can increase that, as you can see. And the more we increase, the more it adds. Now, those boxes are arrays. They are basically copies of this first box, but all as one object. So if I was to grab uh, one vertice here and I was to move it around, you can see that it affects all of the arrays in the modifier. So if I go into top view here, we'll do it again. Move that around. Now you notice that we, have, we are using fixed count here, which is what I've normally used. You can also go by length. And we can turn the length up here. And the length is not a specific, specific number of cubes or objects. It's a particular length. And if we move things over, you'll see that they kind of disappear because they're falling off once they've reached that, reached that length of 11.2. So that's length. And curves, I've never messed with. I don't even know what curve uh, fit curve does. Um, but count is what I normally use, and you can see uh, by default, each object starts where the last one ends. So wherever the end of an object is, that's where the next one starts, and that's because we have the offset set to 1 here. If we were to move this to, let's say, 0.5, there, and I'll go into edit mode, or I'm already in edit mode, I'll press Z so you can see through the objects, you can see that they're starting halfway through the length of our object. So that's the relative offset on the x-axis. You can also modify it on the uh, y-axis. So you can see we're moving them off on the y-axis now and the z-axis. So now we've got all of our arrays going off in both the x, y, and z-axis. Now one more thing that we're going to look at here. There are a few other options that I've never really messed with, but get out of edit mode, and if we hit Shift A, we can add an empty. And if we go back to our array, we can choose Object Offset and choose Empty. And now the array is affected by whatever we do, uh, however we manipulate the empty. So if I grab the empty and move it, you can see it moves the arrays. If I rotate the empties, you can see it rotates the array. And if I scale the empty, you can see it affects the arrays as well. So this is fun to create a uh, number of just quick little fancy effects, little animations, I guess I should say. Now you can copy the array just by pressing copy here. And now you can see well, it's hard to see till I start moving this, but there are a whole bunch of arrays that are basically arrays of the arrays. So as we move our empty here, it's affecting all of them. So that's a fun little thing to do. Now let's have a look at the animation I made the other day. This is what it looked like. Just a little simple thing. And that's what we're going to create today. So let's go and load a new scene here. I'm going to move this side panel for now. I'll delete the default object. Uh, I'm going to hit spacebar and type in sphere and add a UV sphere. Go into front view, non-perspective. I'm going to zoom in here and hit tab to go into edit mode. Now I'm going to control tab and choose faces. A to unselect everything. What I'm going to press now is control alt and then right click right about here and you can see that it's selected uh, everything in this little uh, loop here. Now I can press control I which will invert the selection. I'll press delete and we'll choose faces. That's important that you don't choose 
edges or vertices because it will delete uh, pretty much everything. <laughs> so we're left with these faces. We can now at this point press A to select all those. I'm going to press uh, Control Alt Q to go into quad view. And I'm going to press E to extrude. Then I click to get out of that and I'll press S to scale. And I'll scale this up just a little bit. Let's uh, tab out of edit mode, choose our light, and move our light over here a little bit, and press F12 to see what we got. So there we go, we've got a nice little loop there, kind of blocky. Let's add some more uh, modifiers to it, or some modifiers, we haven't added anything yet. So with that object selected, we'll go to the modifiers panel. We'll choose subsurface, and we'll press T to bring up this menu and press smooth. And we'll get rid of that again. Now we'll press F12 and you can see it's nice and smooth looking. Let's uh, add a material just for the fun of it, but we'll, I'm going to leave it as white so it's going to look pretty much like it did before. So we have that. Now let's start adding our array. Actually, before we add the array, let's add our empty object. I'm going to press, uh, once again, Shift A, add empty. Choose our object again, modifier. We can apply this subsurface modifier. We're pretty much done with it. And we will choose Array. I will now choose Object Offset. I will choose Empty. Let's set this to zero. So now basically our array is right on top of our original object. But if we grab our um, Empty, we can scale it. And you can see it moving down there. We choose our array object again now. We can increase the number till we get a number that looks good. Let's hit F12, render that out. Looking good so far. Let's adjust our, well first let's add a plane, some ground, something for shadows to land on. We'll scale it up, move it down, and now we'll click our lighting source here. I'm going to go to the lightings panel. I'm going to change that to an area lamp. I'm going to turn the energy down to 0.25. I'm going to rotate it like so. Let's rotate it right like that. Maybe rotate it up a little bit. Now I'm going to take the distance down till that dotted line showing our distance in our 3D view it falls just short of the object. And I'm also going to turn up the size to you know somewhere around 3 or so. I'm going to Shift D to clone that lamp, move it over here, rotate it, maybe move it a little further, rotate it. Let's hit F12 and see what we got now. We're looking all right, looking all right. Now let's start playing with our array. I'm just going to quickly show you this, and when you're creating an animation, you would want to set keyframes, but we'll just start by rotating. So you can see just by rotating that empty, makes basically our arrays spin around. So let's get to about there and hit F12, see what that looks like. Nifty, needing needle little shell looking shape. We can rotate it on another axis like so. Creating kind of a spiral. We can grab our empty and move it out like so. And these basic movements I used in the animation I created, but you would set keyframes for each little movement you make at whatever frames you want them to be at, depending on how fast you want it to move. Uh, let's rotate it like so. That's kind of weird looking. Let's render that one out. So that's a quick look at arrays. A fun little thing to play with. Uh, let's let's see what happens if we uh, copy this array. We'll grab this, move it out. Let's see how that looks. Just making fun little designs with the arrays. We got some problems here. We got some of the uh, arrays overlapping, and I think that's because I set the offset to zero, and that's why our rendering looks kind of messed up there. Let's uh choose our object and turn the offset up to, well, let's set that one at zero and set our copy to one. 
and then we'll choose our empty here and rotate it. Ooh, we got a lot of stuff going on now. <laughs> Summit fallen below our plane, so let's grab our plane and move it down. Right now I'm just playing around. The tutorial's pretty much done. You can stop watching if you'd like. I'm going to move my camera around to here and hit F12. See what that looks like. So although we're just making fun little movements and shapes here with the arrays, they do have practical uses for if you want to say, let's create stairs. Let's say you want to create stairs. Here we got something else to go over real quick. Let's scale this default cube down. We'll add an array modifier. Turn the count up. And then turn the Z offset up. Hey, look, we just created a set of stairs. So arrays not only are fun, but useful and practical. I thank you for watching, and please visit filmsbychris.com. Visit the links in the description uh, for example files and uh, some more screenshots. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.